So, what are we talking today? Well, whenever there are elections, politicians want us to believe that there's something called trickle-down economics. Now, I call it soak-up economics. And there are good reasons for why I call it a soak-up economics. Now, what exactly do politicians mean when they try to hard sell us trickle-down economics? It's not trickle down, it's tickle, tickle you down. Anyway, uh, trickle down economics means that the rich, super rich people who, uh, who run big businesses, you give them tax benefits so that they have more money available to them so that they can invest that money in the economy and create jobs. What jobs? Well, let me blow some myths over here. But before I do that, let me explain what I mean when I say soak up economics. I, on the contrary, say that the bigger a business grows, businessman grows, he does not give anything back to the society, but he actually sucks the opportunity as well as money out of the, that economy. Now let's uh, take, break it down step by step. Now, what are tax havens? Tax havens used to be locations around the globe where businessmen would somehow squeeze their money out of their own nations through black channels, black market channels and invest that money or put that money in foreign bank accounts or invest them in uh, foreign uh, sectors say in um, uh, what you say uh, infrastructure or any other thing so like basically a businessman would hide his real income from his own government but in either invest it in another another part of the world or leave it safe in a bank and get the interest so this was what tax heaven used to be now it's the same tax heaven but the things have changed in the modern world so when we were taught about this trickle down economics what happened was our politicians progressively gave these big businessmen discounts in uh, income tax. So they, they, and they said that uh, with more money they'll create more jobs. But what happened? Businessmen got discount from their own governments. And then on the other hand, there were economies in developing nation which said, look, invest in our countries we don't care how you get your money. We don't care where you get your money from. As long as you are a foreigner, we will give you an opportunity to f directly invest your foreign income, foreign money into our economies. That was FDI. Or even not even foreign direct investment, just simply foreign investment that invest in ventures in our nations and we will give you tax benefits and we, if we, we wouldn't even ask if you have paid taxes to your own government or not. We don't care. What to us? That's your government's problem. And what, what's happening today? The government in our countries, the governments in our countries are giving tax benefits to the business, businessmen. And those big businessmen are taking that money, that the money that they have made from our countries into other third world nations and investing it over there where they're getting further tax benefits. Now, it's not that they haven't created jobs, but they have created jobs in a totally different place. And that those jobs are not going to benefit the people of those nations as well. Because, because of something which I'll refer to subsequently in this video when, I, when I'll talk, of, uh, talk about soaking, soaking opportunity. I'm coming to that point as well. But the thing is that our governments lost money in the form of tax because we were giving tax rebates to big businessmen. So what that, what that meant was that there wasn't enough money coming into the treasury. And the businessmen who were getting tax benefits, they were not investing it back into our economies. Holden is not investing into Australia. Ford is not investing into Australia. Mitsubishi is not investing into Australia. They're investing in, uh, don't know where they're investing in, but they definitely got benefits, rebates, and uh, lots of other stuff from our government. Now, that money hasn't come back to us. That money has gone somewhere else now. That's the truth. Now, did it trickle down or was it sucked up? 
it was sucked up and it was sucked up at two levels as i mentioned just earlier it was sucked up out of treasury as well because rather than that money coming into the treasury in the form of taxes we were uh, we were giving them rebates so we were losing that money and because of those rebates all major economies are running in deficit how how will you get them uh, how will you not run in deficit when you don't have enough money coming into the treasury and how how is that deficit recovered people who have lost their jobs or people who are already underpaid we tax them even more we reduce their benefits why because the deficit has to be recovered so has the money come into the economy has it trickled down or has it been sucked up i call it a suck up economics because money has been taken out of the economy what is economy the majority of the population make up an economy because they are the consumers of that economy and the money has been sucked out of their pockets money is not coming into their pockets and that money is not even going into the uh, pockets of the other nation people because they they are getting the jobs but they are underpaid workers compared to the workers uh, back in our countries and uh, not just that there are other issues related issues uh, problems uh, that start with monopolization and destruction of small business in those countries like it's going to happen in india with foreign direct investment now i'll come to that point as well now to explain that let me take the example of a couple of takeovers apple has recently taken over beats audio apple someone who makes mac computers apple tablets apple cell phones what has apple got to do with beats audio which is a sound system produce, uh, provider okay it makes business sense that uh, apple has uh, bought up a company whose um, uh, products it was utilizing in its ipads and stuff like that but how does it actually affect on the ground does apple's acquisition of beats audio or facebook's acquisition of whatsapp create any more jobs still the same people who were working for apple and working for beats will be working in in that company which was originally owned by two different business groups but now is owned by one group and the same is the story with facebook and whatsapp and every other acquisition that happens in market the number of people working in those industries remain the same it's just that the number of business group having interest in those businesses decreases does it create more jobs that said and done how does it it affect the opportunity as well when beats audio wasn't a part of the apple apple was a customer for anyone who could produce good quality audio products so beats audio was another competitor in the market competing with others who can create similar products vying for apple's uh, apple's contract that will provide you uh, uh, the, uh, those components which you need for the sound systems but now does apple need any of those competitors so not only has it not made any difference to the number of jobs it has actually negatively harmed the competition in the market apple has itself become a competitor so it has suck the opportunity out another big lie which we are always told is about the share market the ipos what is ipo do you think that the public limited companies are actually owned by people let's say a company go, becomes a public limited company and gives uh, sells out shares you buy the shares i buy the shares someone else buy the shares do you think we become the owners of that company by buying those shares what's happening over here company has broken uh, declared itself a public limited company and sold out shares people buy those shares that money goes into that company's account now people have got shares instead of money but will they get the money back from the company unless the company buys back those shares that money has been lost forever how do people make their money they sell those shares to other people 
and it's their other people's money that comes into that uh, keeps tra traveling between pockets when companies make profit their shows their, their share values increase but does any shareholder ever get a check from the company guys that look you have got two shares of a company so you are 0.001% partner so we made this much profit here's your 10 bucks of profit does anyone ever get that profit people people are told that because company has made profit the shares have gone up in value then for ridiculous and completely unrelated mom, uh, reasons market crashes like and all that value is wiped off now who loses the money in does the company which has earned profit and that profit is lying in its that actual money is lying in its account does that com company loses that money when when ipos uh, go bust no it's you people who had those Share paper shares in your hands you have lost money because when you are going to sell to sell those to someone that someone else will not pay you enough money the money have you have lost from your pocket the company that made that profit that profit is still lying in their bank account do you really own own a public limited company now at every stage Whenever a company monopolizes market, like in the example I've given, the opportunity for other business businessmen is sucked out. Businesses, businessmen themselves suck out money from the economies. How is it trickle down economy? It's just a <laughs> soak up economy. There were a lot of other things uh, on my mind which I wanted to say. But I'm forgetting them at the moment and I think video is getting really long as well. Maybe I'll make another video and uh, discuss them later. Or maybe I'll just write a blog and uh, you can check it on my website later. But anyway, you may have some different views than me. It's a democracy. Feel free to write those in the comment section. And uh, I'll try my best to reply. But no promises because I'm really stretched for time at the moment. But thanks for watching.